It's everything, really. I, I think it's a, it's a change in, in our way of thinking about nature. We can't just trash the planet for our own benefit anymore. <clears throat> it's water. It's climate change. It's, it's pollution. Um, it's sediment pollution, it's nitrogen pollution, it's, it's you know, the, the algal blooms and the, and the toxic uh, pollution, algae like that. Um, it's temperature, it's carbon dioxide creating acid oceans. Um, it, you know, there's so many things that are wrong, <laughs> but it's all reversible. It's all undoable. That's the great part about it. That's, that's what gets me um, very happy about the future. Believe me, oh, believe me. Thank you, and uh, thanks very much, Sonia and Diana, for arranging this uh, deal. It's, it's tre tremendous that you've done that. And thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you get a lot out of this. What we're going to do is have a thought-provoking session where I'll spill the beans, and then um, we'll have hopefully almost as long with interactive discussion. So this is a field that is, the, the science is exploding. There is so much information now about our environment and what's troubling it and what can be done about it, uh, that it's, it's very ripe. Um, I've just finished writing a book for a documentary that's coming out in January, February next year. There's a, the documentary is called Eating Our Way to Extinction. So it's a fairly hard hitting documentary and writing the book for that was, you know, it even opened my eyes. But uh, the content that I'm about to show you will be some of that. This is how we do things in Queensland. This is how we deforest. We have two bulldozers, the biggest bulldozers you can get, D9s, D10s, D11s, with a chain strung between them, sometimes with a steel ball in the middle, and we just rip the forest down like this. These trees are 20, 30 metres tall, and they just smash to the ground. It's, a, it's an amazing spectacle to watch. Um, this type of clearing, I've got photos back in the from the 1950s, two crawler tractors with a chain between them. We invented this method of clearing and it's very effective and it's now being used in Brazil with great effect. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn around to do this, sorry. So, in the 35 years of satellite monitoring in Queensland, we've now seen that about, on average, 400,000 hectares a day, a year rather, is being cleared. That's about 1,000 hectares a day is being, forest being cleared. What is that in real terms? It's, it's 1,000 hectares a day is, is about 10, is exactly 10 square kilometres. In other words, if you think of your suburb, if you think two kilometres wide, and five kilometres long, that's the area of bushland being cleared every day in Queensland. And it's been happening for the last 35 years. 93% of that is for beef production. And most of it, 60% of it is old growth. It's virgin bush. What you saw in that video is uh, the sort of trees, the sort of clearing that we're, we're looking at now big trees, but it's woodland, it's open in general. So I'm working with Byron Shire. Uh, we've got a project called Replant Byron. This morning we, we had our first field day planting trees and uh, that's to prove it, <laughs> selfie from this morning, but um, it was amazing. We planted two, two and a half thousand trees and there would have been a couple of hundred people pitching in, kids. It was brilliant to see. To, to put Queensland's tree, tree clearing into context, we've got an ambition down there to plant 1.8 million trees. This is going to offset the agricultural land use emissions in Byron Shire. Now, <laughs> the trouble is that Queensland's tree clearing wipes that out 
in less than a week. In other words, our 1.8 million trees that we plant over the next five years, six years, is going to be wiped out in a week of tr Queensland tree clearing. So we know this, but we can't stop. We are one of thousands of groups around the world planting trees, and we've got to keep doing it. So we'll get to that later, but there's a, there's a great news story about what's happening there. But the thing is that, as we, as we talked about in our last uh, uh, um, replant Byron meeting, even more effective than planting trees is stopping beef production. As I said, 10 square kilometres a day, 93% for beef production. So um, I'm going to go through quickly and talk about the civilization busters talk about our, our footprint on planet Earth, talk about the planetary boundaries. Okay, what are the limits of planet Earth? How, how can we survive? WWF puts out a report every year and they, they talk about our overshoot and they talk about overshoot day. This year it was my birthday, July 29. So on July 29, the world started it finished using the renewable resources and it started eating away at the natural capital. In other words, it's like you've got a credit card that you're never going to pay off and each year you just go into debt and that day gets earlier and earlier and earlier. That's exactly what we're doing. Mother Nature is going into debt. You can get away with it for a while. You can push Mother Nature past a point for a while, but in the end it's crunch time, we're going to hit the brick wall. On average, it takes 1.7 years to generate what we use in a year. Now if you, go, if you go into the website and you look at the WWF website, you can actually look at your own footprint. And the average Australian, on the average Australian diet, uses about five or six times what is sustainable. So very smart minds have been coordinated by the Stockholm Resilience Centre and about 15 years ago they started looking at what are the boundaries of the environmental limitations of planet Earth. What are the things that support life and what are their limits? And they define these, they find nine systems that support life on Earth and they found that three of them, one, two, three of them, are actually beyond what is sustainable. And by definition, if any one of these oversteps what's sustainable, it threatens all life on Earth. They found that biosphere, they found that biodiversity loss, this is the sixth great extinction that's happening now. The, the rate of extinction is now actually a thousand times faster than the background rate, what used to be before humans got carried away. We're in the midst of the sixth great extinction. They found that nitrogen flows and phosphorus is a real problem. You've probably not heard of this, but the amount of nitrogen that we're using on planet Earth now is threatening all life on Earth. I'll get back to that. They found that climate change is right on the edge. We are so close to dangerous climate warming. In fact, that's now moved <laughs> a bit. And they found that land system change, this is deforestation, is at the limit. It hasn't gone into the red, but it's very close. What I'm about to show you is peer-reviewed science. Nothing in it is controversial. Nothing in it is outlandish. It's all peer-reviewed science. It's all, it's all fact. And the and the avalanche of science information that's coming out now is unbelievable. Many, many people, many, many uh, scientists are showing us now that we must preserve planet Earth or we're in for a great shock. The Lancet, which is the one of the leading medical journals in the world, set up a commission a couple of years ago, the Eat Lancet, Co Lancet Commission, whereby they looked at for human health, for environmental health, what is the right way to, um, to use our planet? 
and they found that global food production is the single largest driver of environmental degradation and transgression of planetary boundaries. Did you catch that? So the thing that, if you look at a footprint, if you look at the planetary boundaries, the one thing that we can do that has most effect on these things is what we eat. And we'll go through that.